name of the show being changed, uh, which would be kind of weird, uh, being that Raw has now nearly done over a thousand shows. Now all of a sudden, after going from two to three hours, it's changed uh, from Monday Night Raw to Monday Night Raw starring Brock Lesnar. That would be a weird way to ring in three hours every week on a permanent basis and over 1,000 editions of Raw. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they go with this kind of thing. This is the way I see it playing out. Uh, here comes DX. Over the course of eight weeks, we hear a lot of promos from both Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Shawn Michaels having some kind of role at SummerSlam in this match, giving the circumstances of the match, and then eventually they have the match at SummerSlam after weeks and weeks of promos, commercials, uh, and a lot of anticipation. Uh, Brock Lesnar gets the better of Triple H, wins the match for a number of weeks, probably about a month, month and a half. Lesnar and Heyman run WWE under the tagline Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman's WWE, which is a very effective way to get over Brock Lesnar's reign um, in the top position of the WWE. After a number of weeks with Brock Lesnar on top of the business, uh, having everything he wanted, uh, and the WWE Championship included, here comes The Rock. Uh, and The Rock defeats Brock Lesnar and becomes the WWE Champion like he promised the night after WrestleMania he would be. That's the way I see things going. If not that, then Triple H will defeat Brock Lesnar because it's not very often we see Triple H, given his position of power in the company, lose. Uh, only Triple H's close personal friends get the better of him, it seems, and it's uh, been that way over the last number of years, I think. I find that if Triple H is wrestling a friend uh, like Kevin Nash or Shawn Michaels, those are the only ones... Uh, who really get the better of Triple H, and of course The Undertaker, who deserves to keep his WrestleMania win streak intact, seeing that it uh, began for the first time at WrestleMania 7 uh, with an inaugural victory over Jimmy Snuka. So uh, only people who are worthy, seemingly, are the ones who get the victories over Triple H. I, I, I think that uh, with WWE needing to create an interesting storyline, that's probably the only reason Lesnar would win and to give Lesnar everything he's wanted since WrestleMania. And here's the thing, too. Um, regardless if DX comes back or not for the three-hour edition of Raw marking 1,000, which is a staple uh, for anything, if you reach over 1,000 editions of anything, that is an honor, that is a moment, that is a milestone, if anything. But here's the thing. Regardless if DX returns or not for the 1,000th edition of Raw, Brock Lesnar did not come back out of WWE to lose. Uh, Brock Lesnar did not come back to lose all the time, and he's going to have to beat somebody. Uh, to make his return worthwhile, to make his return mean something. Brock Lesnar has not done that. Now, I know that he has only wrestled once. That would have been at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. But that one time Lesnar wrestled, uh, it was so fantastic. And this is why I think Lesnar is worthy of beating Triple H. Not many people do. Triple H's win-loss record is on parallel to uh, some of the biggest things that have happened in the wrestling industry. Uh, it is definitely dominant over a lot of things, uh, and I could name hundreds of things that it's more dominant over. And Triple H's win-loss record can um, you know, stand up to win-loss records of people like Steve Austin, The Rock, The Undertaker, who have some of the greatest win-loss records of all time. He's definitely got one of the top five win-loss records uh, in the industry. Uh, but, you know, Brock Lesnar... This is this is this is big. You know, Lesnar has not um, beaten anybody, but this is the thing: the match that he had with John Cena was so good, and it had that great UFC type feel to it, uh, with the blood adding more realism to it and things. Even though he lost, uh, Brock Lesnar had such a fantastic match with John Cena, and definitely solidified his return in a more brutal way than anything else I had seen done in the past. Nobody had returned with such vengeance uh, like Lesnar did, and the match felt so real uh, with the UFC-type ring attire that Lesnar donned for the match. Uh, how Lesnar used so many uh, different UFC-type moves in his arsenal, and with the blood adding so much realism, and John Cena you know, conducting himself in that match in such an intense way, uh, Lesnar and Cena definitely are candidates for Match of the Year, and if it's not Match of the Year at the 2012 Slammies, then I don't know what match will take Match of the Year. Obviously, the end of an era uh, will win over that one, but it's definitely a, a candidate for Match of the Year because it, it had so many phenomenal elements uh, all coming together, and it was such a phenomenal performance, not just by both, uh, just not just by John Cena, but by both Brock Lesnar and Cena. So with that performance in that one match we've seen Lesnar in since his return and all the fantastic promos we've seen leading up 
uh, the Lesnar Cena confrontation, which is over and done with, and leading up to this Lesnar Triple H match, I think that Lesnar is definitely uh, worthy of defeating Triple H if anybody uh, is in a position to knock Triple H off his pedestal. Triple H has had a lot of momentum uh, on his shoulder since being given the position over a year ago of COO of the company. And I'm trying to figure out what kind of role Triple H has now with the company. Uh, with everything, with Vince coming back, with John Laronitis running Raw and SmackDown for the last number of months, that has been relinquished of Laronitis' duties now. He says the next time we'll see him is for a Hall of Fame induction. The guy was shit back in the 80s, so I can't really see him uh, being worthy of a Hall of Fame induction over someone like Road Warrior Animal, who's held every tag team championship in every organization, in every territory you can think of, from the AWA right through to the WWE, uh, doing everything. Uh, it's beyond me why Laronidas believes he should be in the WWE Hall of Fame, or the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, for that matter. Um, you know, so I think that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss here, what kind of tr role Triple H has with the company. Yes, uh, in 2011 it seemed like Triple H was calling all the shots, making all the executive decisions, but what kind of role uh, does he have now with Vince McMahon seemingly being back in a permanent position because Triple H has become so occupied uh, with Brock Lesnar. Everything uh, in Triple H's world now is about Brock Lesnar and defeating Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, and it's been that way uh, over the last number of months. So what kind of role does he have? So with the uh, conspicuousness and uncertainty of what kind of role uh, Triple H has right now, uh, you know, Triple H is in a position to lose and can afford to lose with Vince McMahon having so much uh, authority in the WWE being bestowed back on his shoulders. So I'm definitely picking Brock Lesnar to win when it comes to a pay-per-view pick for my website, which you'll be able to see over the next couple of months. And it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of card uh, and other matches Triple H and Brock Lesnar will have to compete with for best match on the show. I think it's a guarantee. Uh, this match will be, um, you know, the, the match of SummerSlam, the match that sells the pay-per-view. I've been saying this for months. I've been preaching it. Uh, that Lesnar versus Triple H is a guarantee for SummerSlam, and you can't celebrate SummerSlam any better than having a match um, between Lesnar and Triple H, two guys who have never went one-on-one -on -one before. Lesnar and Triple H have both wrestled icons and defeated icons and held every accolade in the industry. Uh, Lesnar winning the WWE Championship three times, former King of the Ring and Royal Rumble winner in 2002, winning the final King of the Ring to ever be on pay-per-view, and in 2003 winning his first Royal Rumble match. The Gwanda main event, his first WrestleMania against one of the most prestigious wrestlers of all time, uh, contemplating retirement. In 2013-2014, Kurt Angle and defeating Kurt Angle after an unforgettable 450 splash was miscalculated on the part of Lesnar. And then you have Triple H, you know, undisputed champion, uh, documented surgeries that he's had from torn quadriceps to winning King of the Ring titles to Royal Rumble victories to main eventing countless WrestleManias to defeating a host of icons and legends. I mean, two of the biggest icons are going to clash at SummerSlam. If it wasn't Triple H versus Brock Lesnar, it would have been The Rock versus Brock Lesnar I would have banked on uh, for SummerSlam. So really, there is no competition. Uh, obviously, the WWE and World Championship matches at SummerSlam will come second to this match, uh, but this match really is worthy of being the main event. There are only a few candidates who could have knocked Brock Lesnar off of his pedestal of momentum, and some of those, of course, The Rock, Triple H, The Undertaker, have got to be the top three. Uh, and with DX coming back now, it really makes it really interesting. Um, you know, this Brock Lesnar Triple H feud uh, has been interesting ever since it was first uh, rumored about them wrestling at, a, at an event like SummerSlam. Like I said, you know, you can't celebrate SummerSlam any better way than by having two of the biggest icons in the industry go one-on-one. -on -one. And now with DX coming back for the first time since WrestleMania, uh, what kind of role are they going to have? You know, I think that Shawn Michaels should be given an, an executive position with the company given Triple H's role right now. Uh, being COO, you can afford to bring Shawn Michaels back as a general manager. It would allow him to stay out of the ring. Uh, but being the general manager of the Raw Super Show or Friday Night SmackDown will give Shawn Michaels a form to promote things outside of the wrestling industry and give him a way of uh, making a bit of extra money given the fact that he just recently had another child added to his family and it would allow him to uh, you know, stay in the spotlight. Uh, which he says is very difficult to remain out of. And after doing something for 25 years, I can understand uh, where Shawn Michaels is coming from. It's been over uh, 25 years now. Another thing, too, uh, Shawn Waltman and Jesse James, the Road Dogg and X-Pac, 
are under Legends contract uh, with WWE right now, so I can see them having something to do with DX. How effective would it be uh, if they bring back, you know, uh, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, uh, The Road Dog, Billy Gunn, and X-Pac, and even have Joni Lauer come in there for a couple of weeks over the course of the next eight weeks and have a full-fledged DX return with every member of DX being involved in the faction somehow and having something to do uh, with Brock Lesnar. It would allow Sean Waltman to get some in-ring time. The Road Dog, who doesn't seem to have lost a step since uh, leaving WWE many years ago and heading to TNA. Uh, I'm wondering whether or not Billy Gunn would come back uh, for an another run of the New Age Outlaws. I mean, you can do so much uh, with this DX return. It just doesn't have to be Shawn Michaels and Triple H, you know, uh, having all the duties of doing the DX run again. Um, definitely with the DX uh, return coming up for the uh, Monday Night Raw show uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, in the final few weeks of July, uh, it definitely defeats the purpose of the tagline, Degeneration X One Last Stand, which was one of the most popular DVD and Blu-ray releases a couple of years ago, uh, because that wasn't really the one last stand of DX. They're coming back again for another stand. Now, it might just be uh, for the 1000th edition of Raw, uh, but I would like to see DX stick around for the purpose of ratings, that would definitely benefit uh, from DX 